for the most part. Uh, Peter Barnes, you're back with us. Uh, what, uh, what is the Boston Fed president actually saying? Got the speech right here, okay. Charles, and he does lay the groundwork for delaying the first uh, interest rate increase until later, though he does not say exactly when. He says that the Fed has largely met its objectives for job creation, as Dagan was saying, with unemployment now at 5.3 percent. But he argues the Fed is nowhere close to hitting its 2 percent inflation target and could be headed further away from hitting it because of continued slack in labor markets and factors that could slow U.S. economic growth, such as weakening foreign, foreign economies and volatile financial markets. As a result, he makes the case for a more gradual tightening cycle that should enable monetary policymakers to gauge how tight labor markets can be while maintaining stable prices. And he argues that the exact timing of the first rate increases aren't that important anyway, saying, quote, macroeconomic models of the economy overwhelmingly suggest little impact on the broader economic landscape from moving the timing of initial interest rates forward or backward by a couple of months. Analysts say that the most recent Fed forecast suggests Rosengren wants to wait to uh, raise rates until next year. He is going to be meeting with the reporters after his speech, and we'll see if they can pin him down on a date. All right, Peter Barnes, thanks a lot. Back to Dagan, Charlie, and Scott. Dagan, I'll start with you. Okay, we got the speech. Um, we're nowhere close on the inflation side. They're going to use a gradual model. We all agree that was that's not necessarily news per se, and sort of indifferent as to when they actually pull the trigger. But that is the sixty-four trillion dollar question. Right. Well, but he was essentially dismissing exactly when it happens. That that's less relevant. What is the most relevant? Something that John Hilsenrath at the Wall Street Journal has written about and talked about. It's the progression. How fast will you raise? Well, raise. he says it will be gradual. Right. Everyone but agrees gradual. But that's uh, that is critical to the Fed's thinking. It's like how fast and how quickly once you start. Right. Just because they start doesn't mean that you're basis, going to have one every 50 meeting. 50 basis That's points important. is not going to destroy the... They're not, not going to do a 50 the, basis point but, out the gate. But I'm just telling you, 50 basis points wouldn't destroy this economy. What will destroy this economy is on the back end of the economic cycle, China filtering in, and I will say one other thing. The market's traded off. They're going to raise rates this year. If That's what that yeah, was. Right, here's the thing, Scott. Um, a lot of people would argue, if you looked at the Fed minutes, the last Fed minutes that came in, they brought up China. They brought in the idea of the, uh, China exporting deflation. It feels like there are a lot of different worries that they have outside of the official mandate that if they do make this move and they have to go back and lower rates, that's going to be That's not advice. good. If you look back in history, when rates fluctuate like that, when they do this do -si do back and forth, that's what hurts stocks. Yellen has been very mindful of global constraints, global issues since she got into the chairmanship or chairwomanship. So that's really the issue. Now, follow me through the forest here. Let's say that they, they raise rates, Charlie, in December, okay? The market says they yeah, raise rates. The market rates. says it's a bad thing. And I'll we tell you down why. 400 when they started. That Next boosts, 24, I don't it think. It the dollar. So 50 points. It boosts the, the dollar. dollar Therefore, your S&P companies, which boys and girls now get 50% of their revenues from overseas, they get a hit on earnings. Therefore, their stock prices go down. It hurts the wealth effect. They pay their workers less. But maybe you don't get the inflation you thought you were going to get. already happened. Maybe what we see in the market is an anticipation of the Fed hiking rates. And I would argue you've seen a bursting of the commodity bubble. You've seen right. market volatility. It is not the Fed's job right. to bail out the and speculator. And but say, they keep trying. I would say to the well, they need person, to give it up and move on. You guys might not on. like this? Time to take some profits if you've been in this market. This market is insane. It's almost masturbatory that we sit here you every just like day. You like using that word. I like using that word. That, that Bill Dudley can say one thing, this guy says something else, and the market goes up and down. Bottom line is they have to raise rates because they need something in there. They need some gunpowder when the economy hits the you-know-what, and which it will after seven or eight years. A rate hike will do it. So a 25 basis point rate hike, that would put so. an extra arrow in the quiver. So if we start to collapse, so. they'll break so it back out. So they'll come out in February or they March. Okay, everybody, aren't if you glad we've got fruits in September? If it's this market this is so four. stretched, even after this yeah, recent sell-off, that you have a collapse because of a quarter point rate hike, then like. that is a sad, sad state of affairs. Well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not as worried about the, the market as I am about the economy and the fact that they took on $4 trillion in, in, in risk. And a lot of, virtually none of this money made it to Main Street. And that and that calls into question just the very well, existence would, of the Federal Reserve. Well, then you mind. don't want more then, because there's oh, no, some I people calling existed. for more yeah. bond and buying. Turn, turn your eyes away from China now too, right, because the money in, is in starting to flow in, defense, in the trillions in the, over there in the, too. In the Fed's defense, it was the only game in town. It was the only game in town. All right, guys, let's leave it there.